directors and uh, Mr. Bui Tam Hoàng Vũ, director of the Department of uh, Industry Trade of Fortune City. From the guest speakers today, we have uh, Mr. Thomas Russell, a uh, home news now editor in chief. He is a very uh, familiar and friend friend of Vietnam. We also have another some international media agency and domestic media agency. Here I can see that uh, Mr. Lap also thrown in, have just thrown in. Uh, he's the chairman of the V Forest. From the U.S. Consul General, I see that Mr. Benjamin Petlock is here, and Mr. Gate also here from Amcham. I see that Ms. Mary and Mr. Alan Kenny, Chairman of Eurocham, is also here. It's regarding the company's representatives, I see Mr. Heavy Don Dero here, and Mr. Oni Ko from Coda. And those are those will be our panelists in the panel discussion later. We still have two minutes uh, before we start our webinar, so I just want to brief uh, the minister a little bit about uh, the participants. Thưa các anh chị thì trong lúc mà tham dự cái webinar thì ban tổ chức xin tắt micro của các cái người mà chưa đến cái phiên mình phát biểu. Um, we will mute um, on the panelists who are not a, in the in who are not uh, have a presentation. And today we have a simultaneous interpretation. Uh, please select their interpretation, their global icon at the bottom bar and select the language of your preference. So um, right at 8 p.m. we were starting with a webinar. I would like to kindly invite Mr. Kang, uh, Chairman of Hawa, to start our webinar. Mr. Le Ming Huan, Minister of Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, and the uh, leaders of uh, leaders of this uh, the Food Business Association and and companies associations, Mr. Do Sun Lop, a chairman of the forest. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, since the, this, um, in the last seven months of uh, the 2021, as you know that uh, in uh, bios in you know, we is like a locality in the certain key economic regions of uh, Vietnam, where over 70% of manufacturing facilities in the supply chain of the furniture industry are located, have uh, in gradually reopened. This started from Ho Chi Minh City, followed by Long An, Bình Dương, Đồng Nai, and Tây Ninh provinces. These are good signals for Vietnam to gradually recover its economy, maintain position on the global supply chain, and deepen reliable and sustainable partnership with customers around the world. This webinar aims to facilitate international buyers access to official, complete, and timely information for their ordering plans, handicraft and good uh, industry association of Jimmy City, Hawa, together with V-Forest and with the support of the Ministry of Agricultural and Rural Development, Vietnam Trade Promotion Agency, Vietnam Administration of Forestry, which may see the Department of Industry and Trade. Today's whole webinar on Vietnam furniture industry supply chain recovery plan. And we also invite uh, representatives of the different business associations, such as Amsham, Eurocham representatives of the U.S. Agricultural Counselor Office, 
domestic and FDI furniture, furniture manufacturers in locality around Ho Chi Minh City to share information about their members' companies' adaptation and recovery plans. We also have the honor to welcome trade commissioners from the main export market, namely the US, Japan, South Korea, UK, Canada, Australia, the Netherlands, and international media agency like Furniture Today, News Now Furniture and Furnishing and Domestic Press Agency, and nearly 300 international buyers attending online. To start with, I would like to invite Mr. Le Ming Huan, Minister of Ministry of Industry, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, to have a, a welcome remarks. Hello, everyone. To, um, distinguished Association, Trade Commissions, Partners, International Buyers of the Furniture Industry of Vietnam. First of all, I would like to thank Tawa and Viforest for having the initiative to organize this webinar why uh, Vietnam is uh, shifting to the new yeah, state, new normal, according to the direction of the Prime Minister. I think that this time is the most challenging time for Vietnam due to the impact of the pandemic. But uh, the rainbow always shine after any rains. All the challenges will be um, will be over. And uh, the direction of the government to Vietnam had to send the signals that it's time for us to move to a new state, uh, proactively adapt to the new situation, and uh, also to implement the recovery plan for all the economic sectors, including the furniture sector. Through this webinar, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and I personally would like to acknowledge the our appreciations to all the manufacturers, partners, international buyers, and of the industry um, why in the maintaining the productions, creating the jobs and contributing to the economy. We would like to sincerely thank all our partners, international buyers from US, U Europe, Japan, South Korea, China and other countries for selecting Vietnamese furniture products and uh, selecting Vietnam as uh, important partners in their supply chain. And they also share and sympathize uh, with the Vietnamese um, companies in, um, during the time, the challenging time. Vietnamese government has issued a number of the resolution and policies in order to reduce the cost of production and reduce the impacts of the COVID-19 as well as to reduce the burden for the businesses as well as the workers. And they, we believe that the results of recovery plan will, uh, will be promising. This is an unprecedented challenge and but some numbers of manufacturers have come up with a multiple initiatives such as the online exhibition and they try to seize opportunities and but during this challenging time we also see opportunities this is the time for us in order to increase our labor productivity and investment in technology in the trends of the green growth and green technologies and sustainability as well as customer responsibility, the furniture industry of Vietnam is committed to fulfill its obligations in, um, in sustainable forest management uh, and also ensure the legality of its um, timber sources. I really like one of the yeah, one of the quotes in a news in a newspaper that uh, there's more challenging the the more challenges that the pandemic posed to us, the the nicest we should behave to each other. During the challenging times, we should understand each other, embrace each other, and to get work together closely 
the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development will um, commit it working closely with the business of the industry business community, the manufacturers of uh, the industries, and uh, to uh, overcome all the challenge these challenges. And we uh, believe that our industry will continue works closely with the international buyers and partners um, to over to get to get over these challenges. And the results of webinars we also will giving us some inputs in order to to develop the our directions to recover the industry in the coming time. During we in those challenging time we will find the things all the things possible and so i would like to wish um, this webinar great success and i wish all the members a great success and once again thank you very much for staying closely with the ministry of the agricultural and rural development in my final notes tomorrow morning i will have a meeting with the prime minister so uh, please allow me uh, to leave this webinar to uh, after uh, this welcoming uh, speech and i have assigned mr bu ching yeah the deputy director of vietnam administration of forestry who will be here with the uh, with you at this webinar he will acknowledge all your inputs and i would like to, i will convey and will report to me later so once again thank you very much everyone uh, thank you very much, Mr. Minister, and I would like to wish you all the best of health. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to call in by Mr. Thang An. Um, Ms. An will be the moderator for uh, our webinar. Uh, my name is Dave Bui Thang An, uh, Director, Director General. Uh, the Vietnam Trade Promotion Agency. Tonight, I will, together with Mr. Thomas Russell, will be the moderators of uh, this webinar. And uh, in 2021, we have witnessed an uh, important milestone of this furniture industry of Vietnam when we achieve the growth rate of more than 60% in the last, uh, in the first six months of 2020. However, after um, after that, um, Vietnam facing with the fourth wave of COVID-19, and uh, the growth rate has been significantly affected. And up till now, the industry have a uh, some size of uh, recovery. And the webinar today, we would like to bring to you uh, the international buyers the official and complete information regarding the recovery plan from the perspective of the state management. And we believe that those information will be um, will be useful for you, uh, for those international buyers who are um, con interested in the Vietnam market so that they can, can come up with the ordering plan. So first of all, in order to help you to have an overview of this uh, industry, I would like to kindly invite Mr. Bu ba, Vũ Ba Phu, Director General, Vietnam Gen Trade Promotion Agency, who will have an, a presentation on an overview of the furniture industry, uh, industry and the furniture export of Vietnam, as well as uh, its post-pandemic recovery horizons. Thanks, Masan. Hello? Am I audible? Uh, yes. Thank you. Minister Phạm Minh Huan. Ministry? Ministry of Agricultural and Rural Development. I'm sorry, but the signal from Mr. Fu seems to be not stable. My name is Vũ Ba Fu. I'm the Director General of the VHA. It is my great honor to attend this webinar to have representations regarding the Vietnam furniture and home furnishing export in the last uh, nine months of uh, 2021. 
furniture and home furnishing industry is a very important industry of Vietnam and we have a number of resolution yeah, for example, the address of decision of the Prime Minister of the 29th of May 2021 in order to promote the industry. So this is the first webinar when we mentioned the recovery of the export industry and try and convey a very solid message to the importers and international buyers. In, in order to prove this point, I would like to provide some information related to the furniture and home furnishing exports in the in the last eight months. In the last two years, we also have we facing with a lot of adverse effects of this uh, the adverse effects of the COVID nineteen. According to the statistic from the General Department of Customs, in the first eight months of twenty twenty one, the export turnover of wood and wood products of Vietnam reached ten point four billion US dollars of 41.4 percent over the same period in 2020 in which export turnover what based product rich 7.98 billion us dollars of 40 45.6 percent compared to the same period in 2020 leading in export turnover with the following items Wooden frame seats rich 2.5 billion US dollars, up 75.1 percent. Living room and dining room furniture rich 2.23 billion US dollars, up 40.9 percent. Bedroom furniture rich 1.5 billion US dollars, up 29.6 uh, percent. Wooden wooden panels and flooring rich 1.24 billion US dollars of 50 to 50.2 percent and after today's webinar we will exchange update the situation share direction to recover from the effects of the last fourth wave of the COVID in Vietnam for our trade promotion agency we hope this is an opportunity to see and orient the short-term step and long-term development orientation for the industry. This is not only for the wood processing industry for Vietnam, but has been a trend in many industry and countries in the coming time. Especially for Vietnam, the difficulties caused by the fourth way in the past four or five months show that it is very more important to recognize the challenges and more importantly the opportunities of the industry so i would like to share some inputs and observation as follow my apologize seems like the signal from mr Fu is not stable If we're looking at the first line, the two charts here shows some of the trends. The market size for interior and exterior products is very substantial. in the although the vietnam's 
growth rate for the first six or eight months of 2021 is significant, significantly higher than in 2020. It actually follows the trend red trend in the world. If uh, we consider the whole category of uh, interior and exterior decoration furniture in general, made of different materials, including iron, frames, rattan, and bamboo, the import value of the whole world in the first six months of 2021 increased by 40% over the same period last year. And uh, which is about 100 billion US dollars compared to 72 billion US dollars of the same period in the first six months of 2020. This is also the great rates of the global market. If uh, analyzed separately for the technical word materials category. Most major consumer markets such as the US, UK, France and the Netherlands all increased by about 50% over the same period which is higher than the world average. And Mr. Fu, uh, your connections, I apologize. Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Fu, um, your connection it seems not good. So could you please turn off your camera? Mr. Fu, uh, can you check your connections again? Because at the moment, it's your voice is inaudible. It's very difficult to catch what you are saying. Mr. Fu, could you please turn off your camera so to say the bandwidth? For the connection, just try to turn up, turn up your camera. Yeah. I just turn up my camera. Is it is it better now? It's better now. Please allow me to continue. regarding the growth rate of Vietnam, we can see that there's the three, when we look at these charts, we can see that there's a three implications. The market is very large and Vietnam only accounts for a small proportion. And secondly, the market's recovery is impressive. the recovery of the technical wood is the very impressive as you know that in the last in the first nine months of 2021 the growth rate of the industry is very impressive The market size for interior and exterior products and decoration products is truly really significant because there are obviously many materials that can be made of team 
timber with specific advantages such as safety, friendliness, bringing a feeling of being close to nature, products with a wide range of the applications for both interior and exterior and decoration products Vietnam has exported about 10 billion US dollars in the first half of 2021 and achieved an increase of 70% compared to the same period in 2020 2020 However, the export of technical wood is still very small, only about 700 million US dollars, although it can be understood that it's mainly so the domestic market, but still need to fully explore other type of wood materials to serve the new needs of the international market. And regarding after we done the analysis of the Vietnam furniture industry in the coming time we I would like to present my thoughts on market trends there's a few things that we can highlight First of all, is the resilience. The COVID-19 pandemic is an unprecedented challenge, but perhaps it should be seen as a test for the entire economy to adjust to new directions and long-term development direction. In the last two years, the Vietnam furniture industry, we always maintain a very high rate of productions. And we also have successfully maintained a very effective supply chain. And in order to get over this pandemic, in order to maintain this momentum we have to make sure that we can increase the ability of this ability to be resilient of the manufacturers the pandemic is still highly unpredictable after delta variant we don't know what else what else can come and whether the vaccine is still effective in pre So we have it to thinking about enhancing the resilience of the export sector. I 
also have a mention the sustainability. The sustainability covers three P's, people, planet, and thirdly, profit. There's a different interpretations of sustainability, but properly in the furniture and timber industry, the people factor perhaps is the biggest challenge in and uh, of the challenge for all these companies in the industry. And it will certainly continue to be a pillar of concern for short term recovery, for long term development. People factor is also the focus. If the factors of new production methods are taken into account, such as digital transformation, requires new skills and improve productivity of the workforce. So all these things are all related to people factor. This is the factor that the manufacturers in the industry should give priority to. And the second factor, planet, for the what processing industry. This is properly the industry greatest strength compared to the other export industry of Vietnam. As you know that for EU, EU's market, we also have flexi agreement that Vietnam is a signatory. Previously, Vietnam furniture industry has uh, has a had to import a substantial amount. But recently, we also have a products from planted forest, which is in light with a new change in environmental protection. The last factor, profit also known as prosperity. In the context of the pandemic, perhaps the factor prosperity may be appropriate to consider and analyze the interest for the industry. So those are the three P's that the industry have to take into account in the coming time regarding the proposal and recommendations for the coming time. In the Ministry of Industry and Trade has worked closely with the timber industry. especially in the efforts to promote the export. We have worked with Hawa in order to promote the brand of Vietnam furniture. And we have uh, had structure promotions activities for the Vietnam furniture industry. I apologize, I cannot catch anything at all. Mr. Vu, uh, we apologize, Mr. Vu. Mr. Vu, 
Yes, I'm here. I'm not quite sure, but there can your your speech is inaudible. Uh, could you please check your internet connections, and then uh, we will get back to you later. Okay. But where did I get lost? We only heard about 40% of your presentation. It's were intermittently inaudible. The organizers, what lie? Please allow me to move to the next item in our agenda. And uh, Mr. Vu, please check your internet connection and we could get back to you. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm noted, I'm fully noted. Yes, uh, please allow me to move to the next presentation. So up to now, the government of Vietnam and the local authorities has issued a, a number of resolution policies on safety productions, on vaccines, distribution, and social welfare for the workers. And uh, especially in Ho Chi Minh City, the economic center of Vietnam, and one of the key province and city of uh, the furniture and handicraft industry. So what is the details policies in Ho Chi Minh City? We would like you to, to listen to the presentation delivered by Mr. Bui Tam Hoàng Vũ, Director of the Department of uh, Industry and Trade, Mr. Le Minh Hoan, Minister, Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mr. Vũ Ba Phu, Director General, Vietnam Trade Promotion Agency. Ladies and gentlemen, so today after 120 days, Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City, they have to face with the lockdown to contain the pandemic. And I'm very happy today that we see some positive signals and after 120 days, Ho Chi Minh City are significantly affected by the pandemic. And so more than 397,000 people has been, affect, has been affected with the COVID-19. More than 16,000 people die of the COVID-19. And so after four months containing the pandemic with the suggestions of the WHO, Ho Chi Minh City understand that we have to live with the COVID-19 and in the spirit that we have to reopen the economy to maintain the economy. We will implement steps to reopen and uh, as long as it's safe we will reopen and when we reopen we have to ensure the safety there's diplomatic agencies and international organization health organizations and the business and accommodations services provider are allowed to reopen with the numbers, with the limited numbers of numbers, limited numbers of people congregated at uh, one time. And we believe that uh, will be the pillars for the recovery. For example, the manufacturing and the manufacturing, the facilities, all the constructions, uh, sites, the chain providings, food, and communication services will be 
reopened as normal. The markets and supermarkets will be operate 1% capacity. But for the restaurants, we only allow takeaway services. And we understand that Ho Chi Minh City still have a positive cases. And in order to reopen safely, all the things related to manufacturing and services, we want to make sure that there will be no disruption in the supply chain in providing food and other basic services. Some of the activities that may have a high risk of of uh, infections such as bars, beer clubs, pubs and such bars, we will temporarily suspended their operation and we also have listened to the inputs of the different association including how how do you all have a share your thoughts based on your analysis like and Ho Chi Minh City currently apply the three models three on site basically what mean is that the workers have to stay in the factory living and eating in the manufacturing facilities and the second model is that the workers can stay in one place but they will work at the facility and there's only one row between those two locations and the third model is a uh, four greens, which is mean that the where they're living is also the green areas. The factories is also the green areas. And the road to connecting where they live and where they work is also the green area. This model is a popular model now. We also try to maintain the supply chain as well as uh, the mobility of the workers and the transport of the raw materials and in the coming time we will expand the further green areas at the moment Ho Chi Minh City is connect when connecting with the other provinces via land transportation we are going to um, open the railway transportation and as well the waterway transportation. Previously, there are only about 10% of the companies has reopened, but now they have about 40% of the companies has reopened. And up till now, Ho Chi Minh City has the uh, giving about 12 million short the numbers of the people who are more than 18 years old has uh, get the uh, first short uh, get this the uh, first short is the about 7 million people and regarding our labor force so basically more than 65% of our labor force has got a second shot. Or the individuals who have a get vaccinated will have a, the lower risk of getting infected as well as uh, being hospitalized. Ho Chi Minh City is one of the localities in Vietnam that have the highest vaccination rate and this is laid the foundation for us to reopen. And in the last two years, with our efforts, as well as the dynamics of uh, the one of the biggest CC in Vietnam, together with the efforts of the people, the business community and the business association, the reopening of the economy is one of the strong message 
for everyone and we believe that so we will have it reopen in a structural way why we can prepare the medical foundations to ensure the safe production and the safe reopening we expect that the activities and the operations of the industry will be recovered soon and we also look forward to the cooperation of our international buyer and partners and that's it uh, for me and i would like to wish you all good health happiness and every success thank you uh, thank you very much mr vu with the detailed information regarding this recovery, this uh, reopening plan of Ho Chi Minh City in Ho Chi Minh City, with a clear plan together with the supporting policies of the government, and uh, in order to facilitate the recovery of the business community. So, from the perspective of this wood and handicraft industry, uh, what will be the plan in order to adapt to the new situation and maintain the growth uh, rate? Now I would like to invite Mr. Nguyen Van Zien, a Director General of the Department of Forestry Production Development, to have a presentation regarding the recovery plan for Vietnam Furniture Industry Export. Mr. Le Ming Huan, Minister, Ministry of Industry uh, of Agriculture and Rural Development. Hello, everyone. As you know, that the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, in the, the last few months, have a greatly impact the entire economy, including the furniture industry, and in those challenges we have received the attention of the party and the state our industry has also enjoyed some positive development in the last six months as you have heard that from the other speakers our export revenue has uh, increased up to 60% compared to the same period in 2020. However, the fourth wave of the pandemic has greatly impacted our society and a social economic situation. The furniture industry also facing with the adverse impact of this pandemic. Export revenue in august of 2021 has dropped by 30 percent compared to this to august 2020 the COVID 19 pandemic has greatly affected the industry as but as you know that the government on the 3rd of october has issued a resolution 27 to show our determination that in the coming time we will have efforts we will have some solution in order to seize the opportunity and get over challenges some of the key factors some of the key support from the central and local governments for the recovery of the furniture industry we have uh, six key support. The first support is for human resources. As you know that the 90%, 95% of the workers in the furniture industry of Vietnam has received the first shot. 60% of our labor force has received the second shot. And the Ministry of Agriculture and rural development together with the Ministry of Health has planned to secure more than 100 
and 36,000 doses for furniture industry workers. And the local government also support their manufacturers in recruiting workers. It's regarding the supply chain, the government has created created favorable conditions and policies for important raw materials. And as Mr. Fu has mentioned, the timber materials sourced domestically is also quite significant and accounts for 70% of our needs for timber materials. And we also have to see the support in order to ease the restriction for transporting those raw timber materials. So regarding the market, we also received the support on communications and promotion to international markets. And through that, to find opportunities to work with uh, other companies or partners to maintain our orders and government together with the companies have very built develop the models of set production and the ministry of health has allowed workers with the green card green card of covid vaccinations can go back to work and the four key economics provinces of Viet of the southern Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City, Đồng Nai, Bình Dương, and Long An, as can move their workers. And, uh, and the government has issued each resolution number 105 to support businesses. We also have a circular 14 from the state bank to support the businesses and also have very policies from the Ministry of Finance to reduce the social insurance contribution. So what will be the response strategies and suppliers chain recoveries for the furniture industry? There will be three phases. The first phase will be the adaptations and we think it's, it will be, it's good takes about one to three months and after that, we will have a recovery plan that will last for about three to six months. And after that, we'll be the accelerations, which will uh, uh, more than six months. So in during the adaptation phase, the strategies that the company should adapt is to re retain workers, maintain operations, and retain the customers. And our target is that we can restore the operations for about 70% of our manufacturing facilities. And we estimate the export value will be around 0 0.9 to 1.2 billion US dollars per month. So regarding the labor force, um, we should adapt uh, vaccination and set production practices and restore the workforce to the pre-pandemic level. And regarding the supply chains, remove transportation bottlenecks and maintain domestic supply chains should be the key. Uh, technology is the uh, technologies. We should access the current technology infrastructure and resolve only issues related to technology. For the second phase of recovery, our strategy is to prepare for the upcoming peak production season and prepare ourselves for new orders. Our target is to restore operations for about 90% of the manufacturing facilities. Yeah, and we estimate the export value will be around 1.2 to 1.4 billion US dollars. Regarding workforce, we have to stabilize our workforce and recruit, recruit new workers and at the same time improve the productivity. Uh, for the supply chain, we have to strengthen the support to stabilize the imported material supply chain and reassess risk in the supply chain. 
for technologies to have to increase resources for advancing technology infrastructure to meet operation demands for the acceleration phase. In order to prepare for this phase, we have to invest in new opportunity and to have the growth of 15% compared to 2021. So regarding workforce, we have to restructure business operation and enhance our resilience to new situation and at the same time to develop sustainable supply chain for technology. We have to invest in new technology for promoting and enhancing the production. We highly appreciate the efforts and the roles of the government association and businesses. The government with the role of the facilitator, the facilitator and developing policies and mechanisms mechanisms for businesses to develop. The government should issue policies with clear and consistent recovery roadmap from ministry level to the local level. And secondly, we also expect the government can provide further financial support in order to such as reducing social insurance contribution, taxes, and bank interest, and at the same time provide capital for reinvestment. Association in the capacities of the bridge between the government and the business community, they will share continue sharing information and liaison, liaison, liaison with the government to support its member businesses and provide information about the market and for the businesses they will have to rebuild the workforce and in making the investment in technology new technology in order to increase productivity they should also focus more on opportunities and uh, they should work closely with association and other businesses to cooperate so i hope that my presentations uh, hope to give you the message that our furniture industry are uh, prepared uh, well prepared and ready for the first phase and the second phase of the recovery which is the adaptations and recovery and with the efforts of the entire economy the hours furniture will achieve further success thank you very much for your listening Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Vithian, for your presentation. So, up to now, we have uh, shifted from the response to the COVID-19 pandemic to the new strategy to uh, or actively adapt to the new situation. I would like to invite you to watch a short video clip kế hoạch phục hồi chuỗi cũng The wood and wood products export revenues impressively rose by up to 62.6% compared with the same period last year. In the third quarter of 2021, uh, the fourth wave of COVID has greatly affected the industry. However, the total export revenues of Vietnam's wood and handicraft products in the last nine months of 2021 has reached 11.14 billion USD, rose by 30.9% 
compared with the same period last year. In the current pandemic situation, the strong directives from the government, agencies, local departments, the support from associations, the efforts from business and the company, support from clients are all important factors that support in maintaining the status of the Vietnam furniture industry. Series of government conferences and meetings were organized to listen to feedbacks, answering questions from the business, as well as timely implement appropriate policies for businesses to continue their operations. On the one hand, businesses must aim to maintain their operations to meet the supply agreements with clients. But on the other hand, businesses must also ensure the safety and welfare for their employees. The three on-site operation model has been implemented for employees to work and rest, adhering to the 5K rules for pandemic prevention, and it is a collective effort made by the businesses. The on-site medical support has been strictly implemented in each factory. COVID testing has been organized regularly. Turning to the new age, the government of Vietnam advocates for living adapting with COVID-19. Many activities in preparation for the recovery of the wood industry supply chain were jointly organized by the association and local departments since early August 2021, starting from developing the risk management model, safe operations, to maintaining material supply chains, promoting to international buyers, um, uh, in fact, during the first seven months of 2021, exports were actually up 23% and we were close to $200 million worth of exports already. So I think that's a strong sign that uh, the United States is eager and willing to supply uh, products to Vietnam. Promotion activities such as online exhibition via the HopeFairs.com platform, developed by the Handicraft and Wood Association of Ho Chi Minh City, have been utilized as the virtual gateway to connect Vietnam furniture industry with international buyers. Especially with the support from the Canadian Trade and Investment Facility for Development, Hope has released its updated version in early October 2021, focusing on enhancing and maximizing customer experience. Besides that, new initiatives such as the Vietnam Furniture Matching Week, online B2B matching, organized in cooperation with the Ministry of Trade and Investment, Vic Trade, Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, in order to help the, uh, the, the companies and the associations uh, in the field of furniture and wooden products, uh, we carry out uh, diversified activities. Uh, first, we enhance uh, the infrastructure for the trade promotion activity in the long term. Uh, secondly, we also try to promote the uh, brand name of uh, Vietnam. We also provide the technical support and assist the enterprise approved providing the market intelligence. Many positive signs indicate that by the end of this year, the vaccination coverage for the labor force will greatly increase and the pandemic will be under control. The government is always open for feedback and cooperate with associations and businesses. Businesses are now ready for short-term and long-term recovery plans. Besides, the customer support is always an important factor for the furniture industry to become a trustworthy, sustainable partner for the global market.
they will own us uh, to they will own us in the panel discussions như mà uh, cũng đã biết rằng là nhà hoa nhà thị trường nhiều các cái nhà, nhà nhiều nhà, nhà đầu tư của Hoa Kỳ thì cũng đã có cái cơ sở sản xuất ở tại Việt Nam. Thì theo quan điểm của bà thì bà đánh giá như thế nào về cái tình hình hiện tại? And how are they preparing for the reopening and recovery period? Thank you very much. And I'm honored to be here on behalf of Amcham Vietnam. We are very pleased that the United States and Vietnam recently reached agreement on the Section 301 timber investigation and that Vietnam has taken additional measures to prevent the import and use of illegal timber. Amcham Vietnam was a strong advocate of the U.S. furniture industry in Vietnam and together with Hawa advocated against the imposition of punitive measures, including at a hearing about midnight late December last year. Now is an extremely challenging time, both for the U.S. furniture business in Vietnam and for our Vietnamese partner suppliers. Based on our members' best in estimation with vendors in Vietnam, roughly about 60% of the furniture vendors they do business with are open. And of that, the average is operating at about 30% capacity. Some companies have missed hundreds of millions of dollars in sales that have already severely impacted their third quarter revenue targets. November is a huge selling season for U.S. furniture retailers as Americans welcome families and friends into their homes for the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, especially in this year because in 2020, social distancing prevented traditional holiday celebrations. So companies are preparing for the reopening now, trying to understand what products will be ready to ship and how quickly. Thank you, Mary. Uh, it looks like we missed some of seasonal uh, opportunity right now. We hope that we will have the brighter pictures in the next year. And uh, I still have one more question. So what are your comments and predictions on the demand tendency? purchasing potential and expectation in the coming times from the U.S. buyer to Vietnam market? So um, based on our members' viewpoints, U.S. demand for goods for furniture products made here in Vietnam continued to be very strong well into 2022 and 2023. The challenge, however, is that U.S. retailers have been neg negatively affected by the lockdowns in Vietnam. And many of our members expect that the factories here won't be back up to 100% capacity for six months. So due to these delays, some of the corporate headquarters already may have directed some business to other markets where the costs may be higher, but at least the flow of goods is more consistent. They say the Vietnamese market is built on hardworking, skilled workers producing very high quality and affordable products. The challenge is that the majority of raw materials still have to be imported with current freight costs. Those raw materials are more and more expensive and lockdowns make it impossible to utilize the very talented Vietnamese workforce. So some of our US buyers have moved business to China to fill the gap in supply chains. They also tell us that Chinese manufacturers have moved some production back to China using the increased freight rate of a thousand percent into Vietnam and reduced raw material prices to offset U.S. tariffs. With the drop in Vietnam demand due to lockdowns, carriers have shifted vessels and equipment to China, and it may be hard to get this allocation back to Vietnam. Nonetheless, AmCham and our member companies are very much invested in Vietnam and Vietnam's success. We believe there's very strong potential for the furniture sector here but it is critically important to reopen now and restore manufacturing operations, rebuild global supply chains, and continue to work to promote sustainability and innovation in the Vietnamese furniture sector. Thank you, Mary, for the useful information. I bet that we all strive for the better situation. <laughs> uh, also regarding to the materials, um, 
We own Vietnam also imported goods from overseas, especially from the U.S. market for manufacturing needs. So we would like to get some highlights from Mr. Uh, Pat Law from the U.S. Uh, Consulate General. Uh, then, what? How do you think? Like, what are your anticipations regarding to the pricing and the supply volume of the wood material from the United States to Vietnam in the coming time, in the recovery uh, period? Well, uh, thank you for uh, your question, and uh, thank you also for the invitation to attend tonight's webinar. Um, Pertaining to the um, pricing and supply volume of wood material from the United States to Vietnam, you know, of course, prices are varying due to market, uh, market demand supply. And when the global demand for furniture is recovering, particularly at large markets such as the United States and the European Union, demand for log and lumber will also follow. And higher demand will also result, of course, in higher prices. Additionally, the recent global logistics issue, um, of course, with uh, supply chains, can also affect the prices of logs and lumber in the short term. But you know, I'm very, very sure that U.S. logs and lumber, uh, the supply for these will remain sufficient and consistent, and the prices will become stable soon once these logistical uh, issues are dealt with. Um, and, and again, I think we already saw some of that uh, this year when we saw some uh, sort of uh, stability return to Vietnam, as well as the United States and the EU, and we saw uh, U.S. hardwood exports actually uh, expand around 23% in the first seven months of this year. Yeah, thank you, Ben, for your information. I hope that is really useful for the um, manufacturers in Vietnam. Uh, and now, may we have some information from the European business community. And here we have Mr. Alan Kani, European uh, Eurocham chairman, I'm sorry. Uh, Alan, what are your assessment on the current situation and the reparation of the EU furniture enterprises in Vietnam for the coming periods? Answer the same, the same question like for Amchem. Ali, you, you unboot your microphone. Sorry. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. I think Mary already made the response uh, on my behalf, uh, unfortunately, because the situation for the EU enterprises are pretty similar, of course, as the situation uh, of all FDI manufacturers and, and probably I can say also Vietnamese manufacturer. Um, the industry still suffer from partly closed factories as up to now, as the procedures and the understanding uh, by the local provinces are still a bit different uh, and complicated. It is improving very much in the last few days, and uh, that makes us extremely confident for a gradual reopening. Um, as Eurocham, together with Amsham as well, we met recently with the local authorities, and uh, we are pretty confident that uh, within very soon uh, the situation uh, will um, reopen uh, gradually again um, nevertheless after weeks of lockdown at, at a really bad timing for vietnam because that was really the timing where the orders were there uh, the order were full as it has been mentioned by mr fu earlier i think this industry is booming the demand from the eu from france from from germany from netherlands is really booming at the moment and uh, and every everyone was prepared for a record year and uh, these last three months unfortunately uh, have stopped everything um, so on the on the good news is that the orders are there i think uh, european companies are probably less aggressive than the u.s companies in changing supply chain from vietnam to china I think the reason is that many major U.S. retailers, uh, the Walmart, Home Depot, Costco, whatever, have a big uh, buying power and they can put pressure on their suppliers. Uh, in Europe, luckily, uh, there is less pressure and it seems that uh, um, we are a little bit less uh, um, shifting uh, orders. Uh, out of Vietnam, at least uh, for the longer term. Uh, but never, uh, nevertheless, I think uh, we are facing issues like the lack of raw material availability, 
the price increase, uh, especially on the raw material price, um, and um, of course all the issue uh, of people hiring workers, people workers uh, having left uh, the factories, and uh, and still um, a full uh, a full order book uh, yes. to um, uh, to deliver. So one, one of the main concerns remain on the tension of the logistic and transportation. I know the authorities have been working very hard on that, but it's still uh, an issue. Shipment is an issue as, as well, uh, as the freight, uh, sea freight in particular, has uh, triple or quadruple in the last uh, few weeks. And uh, if you can ship, you cannot find container. So uh, mo as a conclusion, most of the uh, EU manufacturers are in a mixed period, trying to catch up with the delay and ship as much as possible before uh, the Lunar New Year, um, but also anticipating that the production capacity um, and order confirmation for uh, from their buyers uh, starting from uh, March next year. Um, same as the US enterprises, I think uh, EU have lost uh, hundreds of millions of uh, production and orders uh, and revenues uh, in the last uh, few months. Uh, it is even more severe for the outdoor companies than the indoor companies because they only have uh, two or three months to recover for delivering uh, before uh, uh, the new year as the indoor companies may have a 12 month cycle to recover. So. Um, the, the, good, the only good news is that uh, what is lost is lost, of course, but uh, the prospect is still there. Um, we see this industry booming. We see uh, with the implementation of the FTA with the EU uh, that the prospect for the coming year is great. The only issue is that we, we have seen some of our members reconsidering um, new development uh, and uh, new investment has been put on hold due to the situation. I hope that with a full recovery in the coming months, they would be able to uh, restart this development. Also, regarding to the EVFTA, when it comes into, uh, into effect, we wish to increase in mutual trade volume between the European countries and Vietnam. So what are your recommendations on how Vietnamese wood and furniture industry can positively exploit the potentials and opportunities provided by the treatment, especially in the recovery period? Yeah, thank you for mentioning the EU FTA has been implemented about a year ago. Um, of course, with the, with the COVID the pandemic situation, um, it has been uh, a bit delayed. Even even the first six months uh, of this year was uh, were very promising um, with a 30 percent increase. Um, the problem I see here, a couple of problems first. Um, I have to confess, to, to confess that uh, still many European buyers have very uh, little knowledge of the advantage of the uh, EVFTA. And uh, it takes a little bit of time uh, because it's a new agreement uh, for this uh, to uh, have a, a real effect. Second, I believe, unfortunately, with the increase of prices, due to the cost of transport, cost of raw material, which I have uh, uh, mentioned before, um, it's, uh, it's not going to be compensated by the uh, EV FTA um, tariff. So we probably will not see a real impact uh, before the second part of next year. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it, is, uh, it is there, it is in place. Uh, we are all working hard to make sure that on the European side, uh, they are, the, the buyers are well aware of the advantage. And of course, we are uh, supporting the Vietnamese companies for them to take full advantage uh, of the uh, FTA. One of our worries uh, is that uh, due to the situation, some manufacturers uh, who have lost money and need to recover the money quickly uh, could break some uh, overtime rules or use uh, non-certified wood 
or violate the law uh, to get back some market share quickly. Uh, but hopefully the compliance part of the FT agreement will be able to catch this. Uh, we suggest really that the sector uh, try to take responsibility and continue to ensure compliance. Um, and uh, the prospects again looks, uh, looks really good. I think uh, um, our, our prospect for the, for the demand uh, for Vietnam goods will be over 50% growth in the coming couple of years. So it's, uh, it's a very rosy picture and uh, very pleased to, um, to support that. Uh, on a side note, I think uh, I really would like to um, recommend uh, Hawa support and the government um, to accelerate the vaccination uh, and to try to convince Molisa for a higher legal legal overtime rules for the coming six to eight months. This will help the industry to recover quickly. Thank you, Alan. For your information and point sharing, we still have the bright at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's coming. We see it. Yeah. Uh, sau đây tôi xin phép được uh, trao đổi uh, có một số câu hỏi uh, đối với các diễn giả uh, liên quan đến uh, phần chia sẻ thông tin. And now I have for, um, a few questions for Mr. Um, Đỗ Xuân Lập. Yeah. So according as you can hear from the other panelists, uh, logistics is a very important issue and Vietnam, yeah, Vietnam Ho Chi Minh City has a import has a lot of important uh, seaport. I have a this question actually for Mr. Bui Tá Hoàng Phú, Director of Jimmy CD, Department of Industry and Trees. What do you think about the operations of the seaport in Ho Chi Minh City and how it will affect uh, the export of Ho Chi Minh City in particular Ho Chi Minh, uh, and uh, Vietnam in general? Mr. Phú, please. Uh, the connection is probably is better now, right? Uh, please allow me to turn on my camera. Uh, because in my presentation, I am free about the quality of the connection. Uh, so I, um, I apologize. I have to turn off my camera in my during, uh, uh, during the, when I deliver my presentations. Um, 2021 is the uh, challenging and difficult year for the uh, shipping and Ho Chi Minh cities has been significantly affected. Uh, in the peak of uh, pandemic containment measures, we have facing with the congestion at the Gatlai seaport because uh, the factories have um, uh, suspended their productions and the containers cannot be released from the port. But now the congestion has been eased and uh, the operation uh, and um, as you know that the seaport in Ho Chi Minh City play a key role in the system of seaport of Vietnam and uh, with the suggestions of the business association Ho Chi Minh City has to suspend the infrastructure usage fee and the um, yeah, to uh, 2022 uh, instead of uh, they have to pay uh, the infrastructure usage fee in January 2021 and even during the during the pandemic period there's how the housing city authorities pay a lot of attention to ensure the transportation and with the green channels uh, or green lights for um, companies to uh, transport as uh, commodities. And so as you can see that since the time we reopen in the last uh, one week, um, there's the mobility and the transportation has been improved. And we expect that in the next month, uh, the operation of the seaport will get back to normal. Thank you, Mr. No. And I have a, another question to Mr. Đỗ Xuân Lập, uh, V4S Chairman. In your opinion, the furniture and the handicraft industry, what uh, associations and the businesses are doing in order to promote uh, their integration into the global supply chain when we started um, containing the pandemic and put it in control? Um, leaders of the 
leaders of uh, the ministry, business association, international buyers, and uh, the media agency. As you know that the pandemic has affected all the aspects of the economy, all the sector of the economies, including the furniture industry. The entire furniture industry is doing our best efforts in order to get back to our productions. As you know that um, all in this current situation, somehow the pandemic has been contained and putting under control. The vaccination rate has increased significantly and our measures to yeah, our measures now is to how to recover and how to live with COVID-19. And we understand that when we can receive the vaccination, there's probability of getting uh, of uh, being hospitalized was significantly reduced. So we understand that we um, have to get back uh, to our produ production. So all those uh, companies, all the manufacturers in different provinces and cities, and it's time to need. Uh, it's time that we need their further efforts. In recent months, the our industry our uh, industry has organized multiple webinars. This webinar actually is the fourth webinar in our series. Yesterday afternoon, VFRS together with the Bing Zhong Furniture Association also have organized a meeting with the Bing Zhong local authority. And after that, and uh, there's after the meetings that's. Uh, the authorities of Bing Zhong has agreed that the companies will organize and this has prepared and develop their own model to reopen and then so we will test the effectivity the effectiveness of those models actually in reality there's no model is perfect the model should be in line with the real situation of the different uh, localities so that's the message that we send to all the social members. This can be three um, on site or two, uh, two location, one row or four green areas. So, uh, so those model, uh, there's no model that the universal, um, uh, universally um, uh, perfect for every localities. Each locality should have their uh, should find their uh, their own model. In uh, in the coming time, we will have uh, meetings with the entire members of uh, the industry in order to uh, identify the solutions to minimize the disruption of the labor supply. In this uh, regarding the materials, financial issues of those are very in need, but the most important now is the, the labor force supply. And in in regarding the labor supplies, there's two things that are responsibility of the employers and also have to consider the effectiveness of the support from the government. For example, there's a the resolution 68 to getting a loan in order to pay salary for workers, as well as the reduce the social insurance and the contribution. So um, at the moment, our association also make some recommendations in order to attract um, the get the labor workers back to our facilities, and so we. Um, I yeah, hope that these um, meetings uh, will also uh, yeah, try to find a solution in order to get back our labor uh, force. And this is the message that we would like to convey to um, the um, yeah, international buyers um, that you can be uh, be rest assured that the furniture will uh, get recovered 
soon in the third quarter and we will um, and we will recover we will recover the full labor force in november and december this year because we have a four big furniture four furniture centers in vietnam bình định province uh, the Nam and um, bình dương đồng nai and ho chi minh city um, the vaccination rate is uh, better than the um, than other provinces and cities and so these are the favorable conditions for our industry um, so we do have in november and december the furniture can regain our momentum of growth so um that's thank you very much mr love we have a listen to the sharing from this governmental agency the business association i uh, would like to have a one more question to Mr. To the representatives of the Vietnam Administration of Forestry. As you can see, that um, do you think that in 2021 is it feasible for the furniture industry of Vietnam to reach a target of uh, 14.5 billion US dollars? Uh, hello, everyone. I personally highly appreciate the initiative of how what to organize this webinar and um, through the sharings of the different speakers and panelists we can be confident to say that uh, after this uh, COVID, the fourth way the COVID-19 pandemic um, we can see that there's a strong determination and the support from the governmental agency as well as the business association and the business community and we have a yeah um, they, we have a come up with a difference and concrete um con concrete um, the policies and measures in order to recover uh, after this um, in the recovery period as the minister as our minister has mentioned earlier and um, we will continue we are committed uh, to continue to continue supporting the industry and as you know, up to now the value of uh, export value of this uh, what based products yeah by the end of september is expected it estimated to reach 11.9 billion us dollars so we still have a three more months to go in order to reach the target of 14.5 billion us dollars this year so with the effort of the companies as well the strategy and support of the governmental agency so from now until the end of this year if every month we can export about 800 million to 1 billion us dollars uh, it is feasible that we can reach the target 14.5 billion us dollars as mr lap has mentioned earlier we can see that uh, we can see the very uh, strong effort of um, the of the uh, manufacturing manufacturers and a strong support from the governmental agency we um, have a high expectations that uh, our the export turnovers of the furniture and what based products will reach in 15 billion us dollars for this year and thank you I have uh, one more question to Mr. Vũ Bá Phú, Director General of Vietnam Trade Promotion Agency. In the coming time, uh, I'm just wondering whether the government will have any specific activities to support the manufacturers and exports of Vietnam uh, to maintain its growth of uh, export am i audible yes it's uh it's audible uh, please allow me to turn off camera in order to reserve some bandwidth hello everyone in the resolutions uh 105 
the government has assigned the Ministry of Industry and Trade for tasks related to support the export activities. First of all, they provide, provide the market information and the demands of the imports and exports uh, from Vietnam. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, please continue. Secondly, support the companies and the cooperatives to participate into the online uh, B2B uh, meetings. And thirdly, to support uh, the companies on the online commerce. And fourthly, to helping the companies to promote to with their, uh, with their export activities. So uh, from the export, um, support activities at the moment of i think that the furniture companies of vietnam is doing very well in retaining their customers and regarding the export promotion activities in the coming time the ministry of industry and trade together with our system of trade commissioners in the world um, committed to work with um, the company uh, with the manufacturers and exporter in um, in the following uh, with the following activities um, this, firstly we will update and provide the timely information and uh, provide this market updates you know, to the manufacturers as well yeah, those information may include the market insights as well as the demand uh, of the import markets and secondly, yeah, during the COVID yeah, period, we can see that there's a trend of promoting the export and import activities in the online environment and the ability to export on online platform and the B2B activities on the online platform in order to connect the Vietnamese manufacturer with the potential international buyers. And uh, through the support of Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development, as well as uh, the system of the trade commissioners in all over the world. And thirdly, we believe that uh, we will have to continue to improve and we have to um, uh, promote the brand of the Vietnam's furniture. Up to now, the Vietnam furniture has been um, acknowledged by the international buyers. Vietnam is the place where we have a dedicated and hard workers and uh, with a competitive price. But in the coming time, in, in, the, in the context of the EVFTA, and the which has a very high restriction and high regulations, high requirements on the sustainability as well as uh, the, uh, the legalities um, and uh, the origins regulations. We will work uh, with this uh, different uh, furniture association um, in order to promote the image and the brand of the Vietnamese furniture. Vietnam as a destination of the Vietnam is the exporter of uh, and a manufacturer of the sustainable furniture and it's also closely linked with this equality and uh, good um, laboring practices and at the same time we also try to protect intellectual property rights related to the export furniture. So these are the three directions that we will continue promoting in the coming time for the furniture industry. Thank you, Mr. Fu. And now I would like to kindly invite Mr. Thomas Russo, the editor-in-chief of the Home News Now, yeah, to be uh, the moderator for the next session. Mr. Thomas Russo, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very pleased to be here and I want to thank Hawa for having this very important webinar. It's a timely discussion. I've enjoyed hearing all the um, the comments um, from the different uh, presenters. It's very good information. It sounds like there's a lot of silver linings and good news hopefully on the horizon. 
Um, we have three very special, or four actually very special panelists with us today. Um, I'd like to introduce Mr. James Michael Glover, CEO of AA Tainin. Tainin. Um, and I would like to also introduce Mr. Wynn Bao, the Vice General Director of Scancia Pacific. Welcome. And I would also like to introduce Mr. Ernie Ko, who is Executive Director of Sales and Marketing for Coda Limited and CodaOnline.com. Thank you for being with us, Ernie. It's good to see you again, and Mr. Bao. Um, and last but not least, we have Mr. Harvey Dondero, um, a longtime industry veteran of the U.S. furniture industry, the wood furniture industry, who is chairman of H. Nicholas and Company. Welcome to you all. And I want to just make sure that everybody has their um, themselves off of mute. I hope you can all hear me. Yes, Thomas, we can hear you well. Tom, yep. Excellent. I can, yes. Um, James, would you mind t taking your mic off mute, please? There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, Harvey. Good morning, or good evening, I should say. Good morning to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess um, we've heard a lot of good discussion this morning, a lot of, a lot of good information, and I'd like to ask you all where things stand in terms of your your, your operations because i think you will be reflective of what's going on in general on the ground in vietnam can you each sort of give us a summary of how things stand for your manufacturing facilities right now from a capacity standpoint to labor standpoint um mr bow would you like to go first sure um yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, it's, it's my honor to be here and, and to share with you about the, um, the current situation uh, from the factory's perspective. Um, so uh, for my factory, um, right now we are still operating with the three on-site policy, meaning that the workers will uh, work and eat and rest uh, in the factory. Uh, we are at around uh, 30 to 40 percent. Um, I would not say capacity. We we have around 30 to 40 percent of the workers the, at the compared to the pre-pandemic level, but the actual capacity is probably about 20 to 25 percent because you know the productivity will will be lower with less people uh, when you're not running full line. Um, so that's yes. the situation. But um, as share uh, from the um, government officials earlier in the session in the session uh, things are looking up um, actually we we just heard very good news that starting uh, next week at our um, factory Dongnai province has allowed uh, workers to start commuting uh, to work if they live in the green zone so-called green zone and also if they have at least one one uh, vaccination shot mm -hmm. so that's very good news meaning that we can get more people and I think the current workers, uh, if they get to go home every day, then it also help a lot with them mentality and of course productivity will increase as well. So I think for us, um, the worst is, is behind us. And I think we're, we're looking forward to a much better um, future starting next week. Excellent, that's great, great to hear. Um, James, would you like to um, go next and provide us a uh, an assessment of where things are for you? Uh, and, and and if you wouldn't mind telling us where you're, as Mr. Bao did, which province or location you are in relative to um, Central in, Ho Chi Minh City. In, in, in Tainan Province, um, it is about two hours from Ho Chi Minh City. It is a good a good distance away. But in this case, you know, we we were able to uh, actually we have a quite um, progressive thinker, uh, Mr. Khan, our, our, mm -hmm. um, our uh, owner, uh, director, he foresaw all of this coming and we actually locked down before the actual lockdown started. 
And mm -hmm. so we've been locked down for well over a hundred days. Wow. And so he, he got out in front of this and we got organized and we, or we have over 2 million square, square feet of building uh, that we can spread out. And we were able to uh, isolate uh, some of our F2, F1 and F2 cases. We never really had a, a, a COVID case in, in Tainin. But we were able to uh, quarantine these people and get them off uh, out of the out of this uh, regular uh, production uh, situation, and we were able to just keep running. Um, we were about two weeks uh, that we couldn't get uh, our materials into the factory, but then the government loosened up, and we were you know with a QR code, you were able to and you plot your your route, we were able to get uh, all of the supplies in. We, we've been operating about 40, uh, as far as worker go, we have about 40 plus, 45 plus percent of our workers in, in that have stayed here. And, and actually, um, yeah, it's been difficult, but I, I tell you uh, again, Mr. Khan has, uh, has initiated a whole lot of things uh, because everybody has been so, um, you know, after work you go home, you rush to go home, and but when you're uh, quarantined in, into the same wall, we've had a lot of uh, situations to uh, improve our organization process, to look at costing, to, to review uh, the way our equipment's laid out. So we have, we've had a lot of time together and I think that's going to end up being quite beneficial for for everything in the end. Uh, mm -hmm. We're we're also the the um, province is also under the T3 where where you you cannot uh, leave at this point. Uh, I think this this province is a, is is a little bit weaker in, with the uh, health um, facilities that they have, so they're still concerned about that. But we were able to start taking uh, workers back into the factory actually even today first you have to have your vaccinations uh, mm -hmm. and you still have to go through a quarantine step depending on if you have one shot or two but uh, we've already started taking back in workers and actually a lot of our workers uh, they, all of our workers that are in in the factory have been have been vaccinated and up to 90% of the workers that were outside that chose to go home during this time, we've had them vaccinated. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's progressing pretty nice. Uh, and we were, real, we were real fortunate to, to, to uh, work through this, uh, you know, crisis. Uh, but um, yes, we've done quite well with that, I think. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, James. Harvey, where did the, where's, how are things going for you folks? Well, we're, we, we also chose to uh, live in or, or lock down and have people live in the factory since early July. Uh, but I must say it's getting very difficult to, to do. We don't have the, uh, the luxury of a lot of space. Uh, and our company is a, a relatively young company, but we've grown quite fast and our backlog uh, is quite large. And the, the, so the severity of the pandemic, which of course, is the one thing you don't want to have in a country whose number one factor of production is labor. So it's, it's made it a very difficult time for us. We're operating at about 50% capacity. However, that's just a recent uh, event. Uh, what, but I really want to answer your question in the sense that from what I heard earlier is that the time, frame, the time horizons of three to six months to get back to 90% is going to be very, very disastrous for the furniture industry in Vietnam. The government has and, and the uh, associated offices have to move faster than that. The, and, and again, to remind everybody uh, that uh, Vietnam is a country of contract manufacturers. There's very, very few of these factories that market their own brand and can make mm -hmm. decisions on what is made in their factory. That is 100% the decision of the customers and I'm speaking primarily of the export customers, of course, and, and, and our markets are mainly in, in the US. So those, those people cannot continue to lose sales 
and cannot continue to look at time horizons that stretch out into the second quarter of next year, which is what six mm -hmm. months from now is. Mm -hmm. And yes. we, we, really, we really need to get more of a unified approach to getting this done and stop treating Ho Chi Minh and Binh Yung. I'm in Binh Yung, by the way. Binh Yung okay. and the other provinces which, which compose the manufacturing super area. Uh, we need to treat this as one so that the supply chain, the labor and the factories can work together instead of having, it's almost impossible to go to my factory right now from Ho Chi Minh. It's, it's, it's really not, not very good to do that. And mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the live in right now, which has been this part of the shutdown needs to become live with. And we endorse the uh, vaccination and more expedited vaccination program. We paid to have all of our employees vaccinated twice. Uh, and it's, it's not free, but we took that initiative to, to keep operating. Thank you, Harvey. That's some great perspective. Ernie, what's, um, how are things going at CODA? Um, where should I start? <laughs> we are in the Long An <laughs> province. Uh, we are in Long An province, uh, which is, uh, as you see from the previous speaker, is slightly better than the rest of the province. But uh, we are up to 50% labor, but not 50% capacity. Uh, as Harvey says, mentioned correctly, that I think uh, there's four, four super provinces for furniture, but they are all actually interrelated somehow or another. Because we got suppliers in different provinces, we got uh, components and, and things coming up from uh, different provinces. So even if we have our labor in place, we may not have our material. Uh, so moving forward, I think uh, the challenge is to balance up uh, whatever is available with regards to material and then whatever manpower is available to drive the, line, uh, the different lines within our factory. So uh, I think uh, as a manufacturer in Vietnam, for, uh, we are hit with a double dose of uh, uh, disadvantage. First is the, uh, the closure, and then subsequently is the cost of materials that's escalating tremendously. And we do understand our customers uh, also have uh, pressure, uh, the, their costs increasing, especially on their freight factors and their logistics. So on one hand, we will want to uh, re rationalize our prices with our customers. On the other hand, we do understand that there's a challenge on that, which we try as much as possible not to. So as a result of that, our margin I think all of us, our margin has greatly uh, been squeezed on, on top of the three months or three, three odd over months of uh, near zero production output. So we are uh, 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 concerned that moving forward, uh, when things get better, you know, being three to six months, uh, there's always uh, a new challenges that come out, comes out. Uh, particularly material, particularly when the gates are open, how are we going to address the container issues, which is already, which was, you know, already a problem. But moving forward, uh, today I heard that Nike has got 100 million pairs of shoes ready to go, uh, waiting, you know, uh, that uh, needs to go to US uh, on a container. I think all yeah. of us also has a problem with uh, 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 shipping, uh, anticipate the, the, the shipping problem moving forward. Yes, shipping has certainly been on uh, the discussion that many of us are having in the industry. And um, it seems like a lot of companies are, are considering other areas outside of Asia. But, but that said, um, they still have faith and hope in, in places like Vietnam. Um, so, I mean, but a lot, obviously, particularly with the supply chain, a lot really depends on everyone or, or close to everyone getting vaccinated. It looked like there were some optimistic projections, 95% to receive the first shot. I'm not sure when that's gonna be, 60% to receive the second shot um are, are you getting any good information from the government or 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 about how what what the vaccination rate is in your in your areas 
Ernie, I, I see you uh, <laughs> responding. <laughs> I think there's uh, different news on different days. I think um, the situation is very fluid. In fact, this morning I was on a, a call with my customers and she wants an update on what's going on. I say I can update you today, but tomorrow may change again, you know, and definitely next week is going to change. So, um, uh, I don't pinpoint uh, blame to anybody. I think it's so fluid that, uh, that you can't get a grips of, uh, you know, a snapshot of what's going on. And, uh, it's a big country, it's a big city. You know? Uh, so I think I can't blame them for the information that is coming in that may not be accurate or may be, uh, questionable. Do you all feel that the projections of the full labor force recovery by November and December is overly optimistic or not optimistic enough? Anybody, well, I think um, you, I, sorry, Thomas. I think you saw no, go ahead, go ahead, earlier you said 90% recovery by in three to six months. But I think that I, I actually don't think it's optimistic in the sense that if the if there was a more uh, robust approach to vaccination and unifying the plans between the, the, the provinces so people don't have to live at work you can live at home and, and and get back to more of a normal life so a vaccination platform with a with a live with attitude i think you can you can you will start to see that the labor force come together a lot quicker i'm i'm personally not concerned with the fact that people went back to their hometowns they had no reason to be here other than the fact that they they were going to earn an income and enjoy nightlife and meet new people. All that disappeared overnight. It, yeah. All that needs to come back, and they'll come back. Mm -hmm. So, so that, um, I, 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 I think that, yeah, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Harvey, finish, and, and I'll, I'll jump in. No, no, that's, what, that's it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I think um, earlier in the session one, we have the... Um, I think the director of Ho Chi Minh City Trade Department. Um, you know, the uh, furniture industry in, 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 in Vietnam um, or in, in the southern of Vietnam uh, specifically concentrates in the four province in Ho Chi Minh City, right? Um, that all of us are here. Um, so I think from the slides that he said, almost 100% uh, of the people in those provinces got the first shot. And I think Long An is, is much better. Um, I think Ho Chi Minh got almost 70% that already fully vaccinated and Long An 50%. Uh, for our Dong Nai province is about 30%. The good news is um, you don't need two shots in order to go to work. Um, I think from the latest plan is as long as you get the first shot and, and, and 14 days later, I think um, you, can, you can start going out and go to work. So I think the... Um, Two months ago, I think the um, the toughest problem would be vaccination. Uh, mm. I think now the vaccination problem, at least in the four in the men you know, the four province, I think we, we already got past the vaccination problem now. The problem mm. right now is to retain the workers. Like Harvey said, a lot of people are going back home in the countryside mm. is because the business reopening rate is very slow. So now people, they're already out of work for three, four months. They want to go back mm -hmm. to work right away, but they mm -hmm. cannot find a job because because the government still have a lot of, of, of restriction on reopening. So now they, they are unemployed, so they, they have to go home. So I think the, the problem right now is we need to somehow have a um, unified, like Harvey also said, and concerted effort uh, from the government to the local uh, government uh, and in all of the provinces to open up quick mm -hmm. enough and in synchronization, meaning that you don't have one province open up and the next province say, no, you cannot go through our province, we're still closed. Because we have the whole supply chain that depends on each other. So I think right now the, the, the problem is how to get business opening up fast enough so that we can keep the workers. And if we can keep the workers, then we can restart the whole supply chain. Then we can bring down the price, and then we can go back to normal. Well, well, but the problem is the problem is there are workers now staying in our factory for the past two months. 
you know, when they open up, they want to go home back to your province. And those from the province wants to come back here. And then you're hit with tech that everybody wants to go home. <laughs> so I think, I think is uh, November is a very optimistic uh, uh, date uh, to, to for normalcy. I think in the market is they are looking into after tech that uh, that things get normalized. Yeah. Can I just add James, one, one thing? Tom, sure, go ahead. Harvey. Yes, uh, one for the, uh, the the listeners. You must keep in mind that the, one of the great strengths of the Vietnam workforce is that about 80% of the population is under the age of 40. This means that the COVID is not as devastating uh, as, say, a, a, a place like the United States. On our factory floor, you rarely find people uh, out of their 30s or, or even into their 40s. It's a very young workforce. The, the, the result of the COVID infections that we've had uh, maintaining all the quarantine and the movements like Mike mentioned earlier uh, are not are not very disastrous to the health and and rarely end up in the hospitals uh, in fact we now had something like 20 people come back from the recovery center uh, today so uh, it's not it, 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 it's a it's a big positive and I think it needs to be taken more into account in the in the vaccination schedule and also uh, the ability to run a company uh, in spite of COVID. Excellent point, Harvey. Thank you for sharing that. So obviously, I mean, uh, it seems like a lot is, I mean, there's some, again, some positives, um, but again, a lot of this is gonna be contingent on people getting back to work, the labor force returning in full force um, James, would you like to, to talk about anything that, um, but buyers in the U.S. need to know this. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about, James, that you're doing proactively to, um, to, to stay in communication with either wholesalers or buyers and let them know that things are going to get better? What, what can you do proactively as a company? I'd like you each to kind of address this. Um, particularly as it relates to U.S. Uh, wholesalers and retailers? Well, uh, because of, we have the Zoom call, you know, so uh, we, we're actually doing inspections over Zoom calls. I mean, a lot of mm -hmm. my customer service people are uh, on Zoom calls that literally last hours. We're looking mm -hmm. at product uh, in the factory, and so there's constant communication going on with our customers. I mean, they they pretty well know the, the situation um, every day as it changes from every day. Uh, so I think that is uh, because of these, these uh, communication uh, tools that we have, I, I think we're staying right, right abreast with the information that we have up to date with the customer. Excellent. Mr. Bao, would you like to uh, address that? Anything you're doing proactively to help as this recovery continues to make sure that you're going to continue to to retain your market share? Sure. Um, so um, first is is to vaccinate our workforce. Uh, we spend yes. a lot of effort in getting both our on-site and our at-home vaccinated. So I think as of now, um, I would say more than 90% of our workers at least got the first shot and mm -hmm. around 50% of the workers already got two shots. So we're, we're ready for reopen. Um, okay. And then second is, of course, proactively communicate to our customers. Um, you know, we, we are mainly an outdoor supplier. And you know, as Harvey also said earlier, outdoor supplier has a very uh, big problem because we only you know, have, we are seasonal products, so we have to ship on time. Otherwise, the customer will lose the entire season. Um, so we are we are proactively um, sourcing material. So right now we stock around two three months worth of materials already in in our company. Uh, mm -hmm. We also work with our um, customers to somehow rebalance the shipment um, to. Uh, a good chunk to um, after that, after the Lunar New Year holiday. Um, but then we also plan to increase productivity. We have placed purchase of newer, um, newer machines 
um, mm -hmm. that we we know that we will have some problem earlier in the season, but we have to somehow catch up um, now that uh, we can start reopen. So we placed orders of new machinery two, three months ago. Um, they are arriving now in the factory. We are installing them. So with the um, higher productivity, as well as some of the understanding of our current customer to shift some of the shipments to after Lunar New Year, I think we will be able to match. We will, we will be able to meet at least 90% of the shipments this year. And I think that's that's a very acceptable um, uh, level considering the situation in Vietnam. Excellent, excellent. Harvey, would you like to uh, talk about any proactive uh, steps? Well, yeah. I, I think, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a little very positive here and be a little bit different. I, I don't actually believe, and I think uh, it was mentioned earlier, orders aren't the problem, right? The, the, the customers are more than happy. Their business is robust and, and orders aren't the issue. The issue is that the, 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 the customers need more confidence that we're doing something a little faster than this than post Ted to get back everyone back on their feet. You know, the, 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 good, the good news is out of all this is that when the tariffs were put on China and in, in the US, uh, most of the furniture customers, uh, in, especially in North America, took a long look at where they should be getting products. So all that's still fresh in their mind. There's not a lot of legitimate capacity outside of Southeast Asia and Vietnam and China. Okay, Mexico's benefiting from freight rates. But other than that, you, you, you just, you, you know, if you go around the globe, Vietnam has an unbelievable opportunity here when it gets back on its feet. And and that is the one thing that the government needs to pay attention to is the fact that if they can get, if they can expedite the vaccination program and shorten the near term bumpy road, the long term will be fine. The Excellent. customers don't I want it. They don't want to move. They don't want to move their business. I'm <laughs> sure there will be some orders flowing out. Romania will get a few orders. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get Vietnam yeah. back on its feet quicker. And with the anti-dumping duties on wood bedroom, I, I don't see a lot of wood bedroom going back to China right away. <laughs> well, I, 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 yeah, that's kind of old yesterday's news in a sense. Everybody's adjusted to that. And yeah. but as, as somebody said, it 25% it, it tariff absorbed 50-50 and so on out of China is a lot better than it's a lesser of two evils and not getting anything out of Vietnam. True, true. That's that's the that's the reality of the situation that we have to deal with. Yeah. Er, thank you, Harvey. Um, Ernie, would you like to share some thoughts on uh, ways to be proactive or things that you all may be doing to yeah, I'm retain? Going, I'm, I'm going to because some of the listeners here are customers from all over the world. Uh, I'm going to paint something a bit gloomy, and then I will have a light in the end of the tunnel after that. Uh, in a short term, I think for the factory, I hope you guys will understand the situation that we are in. Uh, as I mentioned before, our cost is one thing. Secondly, is our shutdown. And then when things start opening up, there will definitely be imbalance. First, within our line because of our labor issues. Second is with, it, uh, with our materials. So uh, the production scheduling will be a bit of a tricky uh, thing. You know, we used to schedule according to the shipping uh, requirement of our customers. Now we may have to schedule according to the availability of the materials and on top of that, the, the line that we are more, uh, they are running. So some of the items that, that the customer wants, uh, we may not be able to give it to them, but uh, you know that will be on a short term until we start normalize, normalizing. Mm -hmm. um, the light at the end of the tunnel is, as Harvey says, where in the world, if you will want to resource, would you want to resource? Um, before even the shutdown, because of the pent up demand, I think Vietnam has got problems supplying and there were talks already to resource uh, outside uh, Vietnam into places like Malaysia and, and Indonesia, but these countries are also full. 
And he says, uh, let's bring it back to China. But then China has now the energy crisis. Uh, two, uh, two days or one day a week, you are no, there's no power uh, on top of the 25% uh, uh, tariff into to US. So I think every country has got its issue. And it happens only that Vietnam, because of this pandemic, is a three months uh, setback. And then it start gearing up. I think every country has got such things when the pandemic strikes. Uh, Vietnam ha- uh, handled the pandemic initially very, very well. Uh, and we forgot about that already. You know, they did handle very, very well. And, 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 and that's where we were continuing to produce where the rest of the world has got problem, even getting back. But now the, the, the fourth wave comes in and then Vietnam was shut for three months. I think every country has that shutdown. You know, we just, uh, Vietnam just came in much later. Right. So uh, I think the, 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 uh, the positive note is Vietnam is still very competitive. Vietnam will still be competitive moving forward. In fact, my factory during the shutdown, we went into the investment mode. Uh, we built, uh, we bought over a factory and we built, uh, we are retrofitting it. We decided to go into uh, a bit more upholstery, uh, you know, and we have plans because it give us good time to plan. In fact, uh, I'm based in Singapore. The whole management team is in Singapore. We haven't been going to Vietnam for the past two years. And it's amazing that you hear that our, our mid management that we never ever had this that they shine, you know, in the, in the midst of this pandemic, they are able to take my job, literally, and uh, uh, move forward. As James says, you know, the, the whole, the whole uh, uh, network within the factory has geared up so much so that I think uh, post-COVID, if we were to continue to have this, uh, it will be very, very uh, positive uh, to all factories. Excellent. Thank you. Well, do we have any time for any questions um, from the audience? I think we may have a couple of minutes. Are there any questions that we'd like to um, have asked from the audience? If not, I think we are pretty much at the end of our presentation here. I would like to thank each and every one of you, Mr. Ernie Coe of CODA. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wynn Bao of Scancia Pacific. Thank you, Mr. Bao. James Glover of AA, Tainan. Thank you so much for, for participating and on such short notice. We're glad to have you in the panel. And uh, Mr. Harvey Dondero, Dondero, I'm sorry, Harvey, of H. Nicholson Company. Thank you for being with us, Harvey. It's been a great Thank discussion. Thank you. My, my pleasure. All right. Yeah, thank Thomas for conduct the uh, the uh, this session. We never, uh, you know, can keep on time uh, with all of the <laughs> seminar about related to the COVID. You know, people wanted mm-hmm. to 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 talk a lot and want to share a lot. And uh, on the question and answer, we also receive a lot of question, and uh, the organizer already uh, passed on of the question to the. The speaker to Mary okay. and to some of the uh, people here. I think that we are behind the schedule. It's about 30 minutes. Uh, hello, uh, now. Um, uh, I got the question for Mary. Uh, Mary, are you still there? I am still here. Yes. Okay. Mary, some people they uh, they raise the question that uh, uh, if the business move to China, is the they got two side, high tariff but availability of the product, but compared with Vietnam, it's lower cost, but uh, at this moment, uh, very uh, low production also. So, so what do you think about this gap? And uh, any trigger uh, more about the uh, permanent move to the Vietnam? People always uh, worry about uh, some uh, some order move out of Vietnam. What is um, your opinion? So I think our colleague from CODA was noting that 
right now. Some of that movement to China is because there is not product that's being produced or there wasn't product being produced here in Vietnam for a period of a few months. But I think, you know, we saw Vietnamese exports to the U.S. go up 40 percent in the first six months of this year. We expect to see a very strong return to demand in the U.S. in 2022. There's a very strong housing market. With that goes a very strong demand for furniture. We think most U.S. buyers are going to prefer to source from Vietnam versus China. I think the key to when that is going to be able to happen more is the Vietnamese factories reopening more fully, moving away from those three on site operations where workers are having to live in the factory to more of that managed risk situation where vaccinated workers can come to the factories from their homes. That's going to help retain the migrant workers in Vietnam and enable that economic reopening and recovery. So we think the preference is going to be here. And a number of our member companies are operating factories here. It's some of the buyers that are shifting, the international buyers are shifting supply overseas, looking at how they can fill those orders. But our members really want to do business here in Vietnam and are very invested in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very, 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 very like, positive huh? answer. Uh, có một câu hỏi dành cho Bộ trưởng Bộ Nông nghiệp Phát triển Nông thôn. Um, there's one question uh, to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. So I would like to ask Mr. Uh, Buching to answer um, the assignment, uh, the signature of the Nepleti. Is um, is it uh, is it is this one of the reasons to um, help Vietnam to uh, get um, to? to get agreement with the U.S. government on the issues of the 301. Uh, Mr. Nghĩa, are you there? Otherwise, the, um, the organizers will give this question uh, to the minister. Uh, and he will answer later. Another question for Mr. Brian later to Mr. Fu. Do you have any information regarding the travel regulations for example, if the expert or the buyers yeah, to travel to Vietnam, do you allow this? Do Vietnam allow the vaccine passport in the coming time so that the expert and the buyers can come back to Vietnam? Currently, uh, Vietnam's government is the uh, is on the process of uh, discussing the recognitions of um, vaccine passport and the Ministry of Industry and Trade as uh, fully support this. And uh, in our official recommendation to the Vietnam to the government, uh, we support um, the uh, businessmen who have uh, yeah, too short of vaccination can uh, travel to Vietnam. Do, do you think that when this will be this uh, this will be a apply at the moment the government is still call solicit input and opinion from the different uh, departments and ministry and we hope that um, this yeah, we hope this um, applications this will be applied soon and uh, because uh, the government has been assigned the ministry of foreign affairs to discuss with the different countries because uh, this may ap uh, apply for some specific markets and specific countries not all the world so i hope uh, i think that this this um, news regulation will be uh, applied in december of this year Um, yeah, it's quite late, so uh, we there's we still some question. We will deliver the questions uh, to our speaker and panelist. And uh, I would now like to invite Mr. Luck to have a concluding remarks. Leaders of the Vietnam Trade Promotion Agency, Ho Chi Minh City Department of Industry and Trade, Vietnam Trade Commissioners in uh, other countries, international buyers of the furniture industry of Vietnam representatives of the media domestic and in international media we have uh, have just uh, listened to a very um, 
very productive um, discussions as regarding the recovery plan for Vietnam furniture supply chain. As you can um, the as you can heard from the sharings of our panelists and the speakers, we can see that there's a strong determination and concerted effort uh, to uh, get the productions uh, of Vietnam uh, of the furniture industry uh, back to normal. And uh, the pandemic in the last uh, three to four months has uh, affected um, our industry uh, greatly. However, we also see the uh, potentials and uh, however, the manufacturers has um, see those potential in order to find the in order to realize realize those potentials uh, in terms of finding raw materials uh, to retain labor force in making an further investment uh, in to in, in technology uh, with the strong support from the government and relevant departments and ministry and there's um, the association i believe that the vietnam furniture and handicraft industry will soon get back you know, to on its feet and uh, and to continue to be the spearhead industry of the vietnam on behalf of our the vforest and the organizers i would like to thank the vietnam trade promotion agency ministry of agriculture and rural development and ho chi minh city department of industry and trade and forest so that we can organize this webinar the attendance of more than 300 uh, partners and international buyers at this uh, webinar have a show that your strong support uh, for us and we would like to say thanks to the amcham baro champs and the guest speakers, um, the representatives of the FDI and domestics manufacturers in Vietnam uh, for um, sharing your thoughts and contributing to this the webinar. And thank you very much, the International and Domestic Media Agency for paying interest and attention um, to, uh, to, yeah, to, uh, to our industry. And uh, and finally, our special thanks to uh, Mr. Thomas, um, Mr. Thomas Russell, and Mr. from Homes News Now Editor in Chips, and Ms. Bùi Thị Thanh An, uh, to be our moderators. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, and wish you very the best of health and every success. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Lâm. Yes. I would like. To Thank Xin you. chào các anh thương vụ thấy anh Tị ngồi từ nãy giờ từ Brazil. Cảm ơn ban tổ chức, cảm ơn các anh. Yeah. Hôm nay rất tiếc là sẽ không có những cái dịp để trao đổi với các anh thương vụ nhưng mà sẽ có những cái chuyên đề đó thì anh thương vụ thấy có cái địa chỉ của hàng hàng qua của Biforet những cái thị trường mà rất là đặc biệt như Brazil. Tôi nghĩ Brazil thì thậm chí là họ làm đồ gỗ cũng rất là tốt. Vâng, dạ. Yeah. 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 Vâng. Rồi cảm ơn anh thấy có gặp anh Tuyên hồi nãy có anh Sơn thì anh Sơn lại không có vào panelist nha. Anh làm. Thôi cảm ơn ban tổ chức nha, Phương Bảo và cả anh em. Cảm ơn chị Thanh An. Dạ. Yeah. Vâng, chào các 